What's good, YouTube? This is ZDog YGO again, uh, back on my uh, buddy Chardar's channel, and I got first place at Locals a couple days ago, and uh, I was able to do that with Adventure Horus. Uh, this is a deck that I've been looking at for a while now. Um, never really had all the cards to uh, put it together, but then I finally, uh, with the new list, I finally decided to uh, put this deck together, and Honestly, had a lot of fun uh, playing at locals, and you know, I was able to go 4 0 with it, so that was pretty nice. Uh, so, we're gonna get into the main deck, uh, starting off with our Horus engine. Uh, of course, we're playing Triple M Seti, just the best one to open. You always want to see this. Uh, biggest Ash Magnet alive, but sometimes you just have to go through that. Uh, we're playing one Dumatef, one of the uh, Black Flame Deity. Um, in all honesty, I really want to cut this card. Uh, when I played it at Locals, I almost sided out almost every game. Uh, it's a fact very rarely ever comes up. And uh, there's a card that you're going to see later on in my list that I would almost prefer to play um, another copy of uh, as opposed to this card. Uh, and then just one of each of Hoppy and uh, Quebesnef. Um Playing one of each of these was fine. Uh, you never really want to draw into any of, like, these uh, four Horuses. Really, the only one you ever want to see is, like, Imseti. Or you want to see, like, the spells, obviously, to uh, get stuff out of your hand. But uh, this ratio is fine. I never wanted, like, any more. Uh, and then the spells, like, obviously, Triple King Sark, uh, Triple Walls of the Imperial Tomb. We're also playing the Terraforming. Um, I'm not playing the... Rainbow Bridge, uh, the Rainbow Bridge package with the uh, Crystal Wing or the um, uh, Crystal Beast Dragon. Um, I feel like that package just doesn't provide enough advantage, especially just when you're only playing. Like this is my only field spell I'm playing in the deck, uh, main or side. So I didn't really feel a need to uh, have to clog my deck with like more bricks. But this, uh, this worked out fine for me. Like, I wouldn't change anything about this. Uh, onto the Adventure Engine, it's just kind of like the standard package that we're all used to seeing. Uh, three Water Enchantresses, one Griffin, uh, three Right, one Fateful, one Dracoback. Uh, this engine just overperformed for me all weekend. Uh, gave me a lot of advantage. Gives you a lot of discard fodder for things like your Imseti or... Uh, being able to put back like these two with uh, walls if you happen to draw them is pretty nice uh, but like even when you drew multiples of it usually I would side like one of these going uh, usually one going second I would always side like one of the right of Aramisiers out so this engine just kind of like overperformed honestly this was honestly probably one of the best parts of the deck all weekend uh, more generic monsters uh, we are playing triple Fenrir uh, and then this is honestly the card I would want to play another copy of. Uh, I only played one Vanities Ruler this weekend, and honestly, it worked out really well. Um, I had an opponent that I was on my fourth summon, and they were about ready to Nibiru me, and then I just went, okay, cool, tribute summon Vanity Sphine. And after the match, they looked at me, and they were like, man, they were like, I had the Nibiru in hand, like, I was ready to cook you. And just this card just overperformed for being only a one of. Uh, like I said, I think later on the deck I want to play a second one of this over the uh, the Horus or the uh, the Black Flame Beauty. But uh, these three cards overperformed. The Fenrir just absolutely overperformed. It provides so much pressure uh, going second, even just going first. Like being able to special this, search another one, and just have a free discard to start your Imseti off. Uh, I did have a I did have a game where I drew all three of them, uh, and I put one back with the Imperial Tomb, and I searched it later with uh, the second one. So that's always nice. Uh, and then the rest of the monsters that we're playing is we're just playing three Ash. Um, I saw a earlier Horus list that was going way wide on hand traps, and I just I wanted better discard outlets for things like my Imseti, things like my Tomb. And so I decided to go a little bit lighter on the hand traps. Uh, also, just with some of the stuff that you inherently play in this deck, you already have a decent matchup going second. And then 
uh, post side, like you have a pretty good matchup being able to go second into most uh, established boards. Uh, spell wise, uh, we're playing one called by just because you really want Imp Seti to resolve. Uh, and as well, we're playing three Pod Desires. I'm so glad we get to play three of this again. Um, yeah, just drawing two cards is insane. Usually, you know, you hold this until the end of your combo after you have dumped like two or three of your names. And then you just go Pod Desires in order to uh, try and grab, you know, two additional cards. You know, whether that be uh, things like your uh, Vanity's Ruler, maybe uh, another... Uh, right for next turn if your uh, enchantress gets stopped but uh, and then traps just six of them uh, we are playing three impermanence again same thing with ash this is kind of like the most generic hand trap overall uh, and just kind of does a lot against uh, certain matchups uh, and then the best card in the deck is <laughs> obviously skill drain i cannot tell you how many games i won because uh I just set skill drain, I used up all my negates, and my opponent thought he had me, and then I just flipped this up, and, you know, it's essentially over. You know, you essentially boil the game down to, once skill drain is flipped up, you essentially just boil it down to big beats turbo. And, you know, when all of your dudes are 3,000, you know, 2,500, 24, and your opponent's, uh, your snake eye opponent is just sitting on a bunch of little dudes, like, not really a lot he can do uh, against this card. Also... If you are going second with this deck, you never side this card out. This card stays in your main deck at all times, all the time. This card never gets sided out. Um, extra deck, I never use this all weekend, uh, but it's just there for utility. So like one IP, one SP, uh, Dark, Selene. Uh, I played BLS. Again, like, none of this stuff ever came up, but in theory, like, you can make it uh, be untargetable and can't be destroyed by card effects, so that's kind of nice. Uh, one access code to help you uh, clear out pesky boards. Uh, and then one underworld goddess to deal with, like, towers. Like, if you ever play against Raid Raptor, like, this card's just really good. Uh, and then Xyz, uh one number 90. Uh, it's a monster negate, one Garunix. This is a uh, dark hole on legs. Uh, one Buzz King. This was actually the card I probably made the most in the extra deck, because going first, if you open the Horus Engine plus Skill Drain, uh, oftentimes I would actually make this in order to uh, get knowledge of what my opponent was playing. That way, I could you know formulate my plans a little bit more to how I'm gonna combat their strategy. Uh, one Giant Trainer. This is just for time, or if you really really need to draw three cards because you want to see your vanity's ruler it's also there uh this is probably the card i made the second most was lance a lot and a lot of people actually forget that this card exists so this card is just on uh on a 2k body with for any two level eights is just a free omni negate now unfortunately it is mandatory so the first thing that your opponent does or the first action taken it does have to negate it but a lot of times, like in simplified game states against certain decks, like this card is just an FTK. Like against Snake Eye, you know, if all they have is just normal summon Ash and you have this on the board, uh, more times than not, they're not going to be able to play through it. Um, one Pain Gainer, uh, this is just to make a big Zeus with things like a Buzz King or your Lancelot. And then obviously like the, the big boy Zeus himself and then Typhon. Like I said, this extra deck is so uh, open. Like, you could play different things. Like, you could play um, the Numeron, Dragon, OTK line. Uh, you could play things like Hope Harbinger. You could play uh, some other different rank 8s. Uh, I know one of the Heratic rank 8s, like, prevents targeting. So, you could play a lot of different things. This is just what I came up with. Uh, like I said, with this deck, and especially with the Horror, or uh, with the Adventure Engine... You don't really ever go into this deck or the extra deck so much. You know, a lot of it is just relying on big beats dot turbo. So, uh, then side deck. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I hardly saw any of this side deck, but I still feel like this is really good. Uh, three lava golem again. Like you don't need your normal summon. You play the adventure engine too. So, 
Uh, you can lava golem to your guy, two other guys, and if you have the adventure engine uh, and Draco back, you can just bounce this back to your hand and do it again. Uh, also comes up in time because it burns your opponent. Uh, three Nibiru. This was just kind of for more combo heavy decks like Monodium or Snake Eyes. Uh, if they play, if they decide to play really greedy, uh, this card kind of can hurt them quite a bit. Uh, and then three Droll and Lockbird. Uh, this was kind of for Voiceless, also for Flu. I have a lot of Flu players in my locals, so kind of wanted to make sure that I kept them in check. Uh, and then instead of playing like the traditional like sideboard with like judgments and evenlies, uh, I decided to play the last six slots as the thrust sideboard. So we're playing three thrusts and then one of uh, one of each of the targets. Um, this card is really, really good in this deck, especially with the adventure engine, because, uh, if they stop you, you can just go either grab your Rite of Aramisir, or you could grab, um, uh, you could grab terraforming for the, uh, walls, but also just like being able to toggle into any one of these at any given time. Uh, oftentimes like I would, my side pattern would be something like this. And especially against Snake Eye and against Fire King, they're almost always using something in the standby phase. So this card is almost always going to be live. I don't understand how people don't think this card is good. I understand that, yes, this is a, a little bit out of some people's price range. Uh, if you can't afford this card, I would recommend playing things like Triple Evenly, uh, Three Judgment to uh, help you go first. Um, I've also seen people play uh, sphere modes in the past, so uh, again, it's kind of just up to your preference, kind of up to uh, personal choice. And yeah, that is the uh, that is the deck profile. Like I said, I went 4-0 at locals, and uh, like I said, this deck is you know really a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun to flip skill drain on somebody uh, after they think they've won or they've cracked your board, and you just tell them, haha. Uh, the game is no longer fun. I'm just going to beat you down with my 3k bodies, but uh, that is all I have. Uh, remember to uh, like, comment, subscribe. I always like uh, reading the comments and taking any feedback or any ways to uh, improve uh, my decks, but thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, yeah, peace out, YouTube.